the final storyteller of the evening. Put everything you have into welcoming Matthew Dix. Thank you. I pull my car through the McDonald's drive through line. I'm picking up two quarter pounders with cheese, a large fry, and a large Coke. About a mile away in a hospital, my wife has just gone into labor. But I've gone through this process before, and I'm not going to make the same mistake. Three years ago, her water broke, and we ran to the hospital. And 14 long, foodless hours later, my daughter was born. And when they put her in my hands for the first time and I looked into her eyes, truly the only thought I had was, when can I put this baby down and get myself a cheeseburger? So I'm not going to make that mistake again. I was told that childbirth is beautiful, but that is bullshit. Like the people that believe that are in denial. When my daughter was born, I sat next to my wife for seven hours while she tried to push a baby out of her vagina. I held her hand. At first, I was pushing, too, until a doctor leaned in and said, pushing will do nothing for you, sir. And I stopped. He was right. But as I'm holding her hand and supporting her, I'm looking across the room because my cell phone is on the other side. And I'm just thinking, like, if I could just get to Twitter, this would not be so boring. Because truthfully, it's the worst thing. And I want to be present because my daughter is about to be born. I feel like this is the moment to be present. But it turns out being present, like, sucks. It's the worst. And then the baby won't come out, so a man with a vacuum comes in, and like vacuuming your wife's vagina to get a baby out is not beautiful. And then I'm introduced to the word macomium, which is baby's first poop, which apparently my child is now doing inside my wife, turning her into like a septic system. So now we are off to the emergency room to have a C-section. They drop me off in a locker room so that I can put like this hazmat suit on. I cover up a Superman t-shirt that I'm wearing because when I, took, when I held my baby the first time, I wanted her to see me as a superhero, but now she will see me as a giant yellow condom. <laughs> They forget me in the locker room. And so when a nurse walks by, she goes, oh shit, you're still here? And so when I walk into the emergency room, my wife is there. My goal for the whole time was to never go south of the equator. Like I did not want to see my wife in some way that I didn't already love. So I wanted to stay north. But when I walk into the emergency room, I don't see north or south, I see the equator. They have already started cutting her open and they're putting things on the side to get the baby out and so I scream and the nurse grabs me by the shoulders and says, put your damn head down. And she leads me to a stool behind the screen and I sit down and my wife is lying there. Her name's Alicia. She's freezing. She's got her arms splayed. She can't move. There's a tube running by her face and it is the suction tube. They haven't had time to like hide it. So there's blood and little bits running right by us as they're working on her. Nothing is beautiful about this process. <laughs> And eventually I hear my baby cry and they tell me it's a girl. And I do not want that situation this time. It is a planned C-section for this baby. I have food in my belly, but I got two new problems. One is we have a placental abruption. And I don't know what that really means, except it means that my baby's life might be in jeopardy. And the other problem I have is Clara, my daughter, who is now three, who believes that this baby is going to be a girl no matter what. For the last nine months, she's been going, it's a girl, and we say, or a boy, and she says, no, it's a girl. She is in the greatest denial of all time because three-year-olds can believe anything they want. And so she has like planned tea parties and stuffed animal parties. The entire nine months, it is a girl, and I am now terrified that it might be a boy, and she's going to screw everything up. And so we're in the emergency room again, and uh, the cutting is happening, and they've hidden the tube this time, so that is good. And I'm just terrified, because placental abruption, whatever it is, means that this baby might not be okay. And I'm waiting and waiting, and we have music playing, and the bird's turn, turn, turn comes on. And just as the song comes on, I hear my baby cry for the first time. And the doctor says, it's a boy. 
what's his name? And my wife, who has been silent for the whole procedure, she calls out his name, and it is like a song to me. She says, Charlie, and he's okay. He gets an APGAR score of 9 out of 10, which is great. I asked the nurse, why didn't he get a 10? And she says, we never give 10s, which is total bullshit. Because if you have a 1 through 10 scale, you occasionally have to give a 10. So I announce in the operating room that he is a fucking 10. And when I hold them this time, I have a full belly. And so now we're rolling towards the wait to her room, and we're going to pass the waiting room where Clara is waiting for us. And Alicia's in bed, and she's holding Charlie to her chest. And I see Clara at the end of the hallway. And Clara yells, first words, is it a girl? And I say, no, honey, it's a boy. She doesn't throw herself to the floor. Everything gives out. She collapses to the floor and weeps. And so I go to her and I pick her up and I hold her and she won't look. And I say, Clara, look at your brother. His name is Charlie, the first time I ever say his name. And she looks and it is the first and the only time in my life that I have seen love at first sight. This ball of rage and anger, I can feel it melt in my hands. To love and she reaches out with her hand and she touches Charlie's hand for the first time there's nothing good about childbirth but what can come after can truly be beautiful thank you